the Justice Podcast with your hosts, Damber Wagner and Jacob Willis. What's the deal, y'all? Welcome to episode 42. It's your girl, Just Living Baby. And your boy, Jacob Willis, and you tune into the Just, Just Us, Us Podcast. Podcast. Well, we're not alone. We have today the beautiful. She's an actress. She stands in three foot eight inches of confidence. Yes. The one and only Allie Chapman. Hi. What's up, friend? Hello. How are you guys? How are you? Thank you. I'm I am great. I am good. And thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. You look so cute. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I I love some black. I clean up Uh, the pack. Hello? You got the black boots on or whatever? I got to have a little heel because. I'm sure. I need all the height I can get. Period. Right. <laughs> Listen, I'll be saying that too about my man. <laughs> mm, got you. Yes. How you been, Fred? You look so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm okay. I'm going to get into what I've been up to, but we're going to start with this mental health moment. Come on now. Then we'll jump in. <laughs> okay. So on every episode, we start with a mental health moment. And today we're going to kind of put it, you know, the focus around you and everything. So our mental health moment is being comfortable with who you are and finding confidence in yourself. Is it a struggle? Yes, it is definitely a struggle. I mean, especially, you know, when you're visibly different. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's it's like on a daily basis, I don't really, you don't see I haven't seen anybody like myself. Right. So just in that, like, you know, when you're at home, you, you uh, yeah, I'm not really thinking about it a lot, mm-hmm. but it's when you hit the door, you go outside in the public, and, you know, people do treat you a certain way. It's not all bad. Sometimes it's good. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they're just, you know, inquisitive, curious. Right. But I get all types of reactions and by being me. So it can wear on your mental health sometimes, you know, but... Right. You just try to take it all in stride and make the most of it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to get like a lot of stares and stuff? Do I have a lot of Like, Do people give you like a lot of stares? Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. So the stares don't stop. Like, they are... But, I mean, here's the thing. Some people know better and some people don't. Mm -hmm. So I can go places and and not be stared at, not be looked at. But then you can go somewhere else and then everybody's looking at... And, you know, I'm just kind of like... I, I've been doing this thing now where I stare back. Like, okay. We'll, we'll have a staring contest mm-hmm. up in here, you know? <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Don't play with it. Yeah. And then and then finally, I'll go, like, oh, okay. Like, let me look away. But, but yeah, it, it you know, it's, it's just, it's, I, I could probably write a book about it. Like, it's, Facts. It, it's yeah. a lot, but um, it's, a, it's almost, I almost compare it to like, it's almost like you're a celebrity, but you don't have the fame or the fortune. So people are staring, like, because that's what we do to celebrities, exactly, you know. Exactly. Yeah. But I, I, I don't have, you know, the, the, the fame and the fortune, not yet. But <laughs> right, it's, it's coming. coming. Right, it's yeah, coming. That's yeah. Hello. Yeah. I know a lot of us have our own insecurities that we all deal with. Me being bullied growing up, people calling me gay or people saying that I look like a girl. Fat. Right. We all deal with that. All but I remember, um, in one of your interviews, you did say that you there was two other people that were smaller people, um, at your high school, and you kind of distanced yourself from them. Mm. Yeah. Why is that? You know what? Okay, so I, I grew up in the Midwest. Okay. And where I grew up, um, there were like, you know, like I did state that there were two uh, little people in my school. But other than that, that was it. So I really wasn't used to being around little people. Um, I didn't, I, want, I wasn't friends with them. I didn't really, I, I met them in high school or I saw them in high school. We had the largest high school in, in the state of Indiana. Hmm. So with that, with that, like, there's just so many people that right. I didn't really interact with them. But then it's like I didn't really want to interact with them, and I don't know why. I mean, I do know why looking back. I mean, it's kind of weird, but it's – I think it it made me feel, you know, it was – I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was like I just wanted to be the only one or if I'm around them, then there's a lot of attention on all of us. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and so and, – and when I was younger, I wanted to try to blend in. I didn't really want to stand out. Now, I know I did, but I thought, well, if I just, you know, mm-hmm. just whatever, don't, like, make a scene or whatever, then maybe You're going people to the will overlook it, yeah. you know. So, I, yeah, I didn't really interact with them. But then I came out to L.A., and then here in L.A., you know, the first job I ever got was a uh, was at this crazy nightclub, um, Beecher's Madhouse, and 
that club was kind of based around having little people entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I went from like having no little people friends to not knowing any little people to then just being around little people all the time. Wow. So it's it took a little, you know, bit me getting used to, but now I'm just like, I don't even know why I was tripping. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah. Now, this is my question. No offense or anything. I remember back in the day. Now, I'm not sure, but I thought that the word like midget and dwarf, I thought that was regular to say. But now it's like, don't say that at all. It's a little person. Can yeah. we talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Well, I, I think more so the term midget is... Okay always been derogatory. Okay. And, and okay. I think the reason, well, I don't, I've looked up the, the textbook meaning of mm -hmm. it. It means like half of, or, you know, like not a whole. Gotcha. So, so as a little person, you don't want to be thought of as, as half, half of, not of anything, portion, right. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then also too, it's, it's always like the way that people have used that word. It's like, they're being mean, like, ha ha, there's a midget. So it's not mm. even like, you know, it's not even usually in a in a term of endearment or like in a like Uplifting in a loving way. way. Right. Yeah, Positive. yeah, I hear you. Yeah, and so so I think that's why most little people uh, take offense to that. Gotcha. Um, so there's some little. I mean, I know there's like there's a, a little person porn star, and her name is she named herself Bridget the Midget, so mm -hmm. she's clearly <laughs> fine with it. But I I say. Overall, most people are not okay with it. Um, you know, I've been called every <laughs> name in the book. Um, so, you know, I, I don't like that term, but, right. you know, I've heard it and I just try to let it roll off. But I always prefer, you know, either a little person, little people, or even dwarf is okay with me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for letting us know. Some people don't know. We need to be educated. So appreciate that. Right. Because I didn't know that uh, midget meant half of. That's crazy. I never knew that. Yeah, that's out. Uh-uh. Right. Yeah. Right. No. My friend is what they have of. Uh. <laughs> right. So yeah. before we get into your career and things like that, I do want to ask you because I've been out with you multiple times in the past. Mm -hmm. I even see you at the club, honey. And you know me, I'll get on my knees and dance with you in a minute. <laughs> have you yeah. ever ran into a friend or associate and they picked you up? And is that a big no-no? And how did you feel? Yes. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. Um... You know what? Yes. People have this fascination with, I, I was even going to make a TikTok about it or like uh, uh, something. People have this fascination with picking up little people. Mm. And, you know, and I don't know what it is. I don't know what, what, what is that? Because we're adults and th do you go around trying to pick up other adults? Like, no. you don't see somebody down the street and like, oh, I want to pick Only my man can do that. And I ain't got one, so nobody's picking me up. <laughs> Right, exactly. Right. But people are just, they, they're so fixated on, on picking up little people. And, you know, I will say in my younger years, I kind of let it happen sometimes. But now it is like, I, I will freak, I will let you have it. I will right. freak out. Like, do not pick me up. I, I don't care that you know you can pick me up. Mm -hmm. I Just don't do it. I'm an adult, right. just like you. And, you know, I'm a grown woman. Like, don't do not pick me up. What about when people come to you and say, oh. Like, how does that make you feel? Like, oh, so cute. Oh, like. Yeah, that, that you know, that doesn't, that doesn't really bother me because okay, good, good. most of the time, like you said, they're, they're saying it like, oh, you're so cute. Exactly. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would kind of say that to like a puppy dog too. Right. That's why I asked. <laughs> yeah. Or a baby. Or, you know. yeah, or a baby yeah. What's that place? That It's a, um, a club on Hollywood Boulevard. It's always Halloween. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, um, oh, I sorry. forgot the name of it, but it's a little person that works there, and every time I see him, I'll say, oh, my gosh, because it's just so cute. He had a Chucky suit on, and <laughs> oh, I just loved him. Like, I just want to grab him. Like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he and he's probably... Beetle, I, I Beetle, know House. Beetle House. Beetle yeah. House, yeah. Yeah, yes. Be, yeah, I know that... Um, he, I, I've worked with him before. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, his name's Gabe. Okay. But, um, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, Gabe. <laughs> Give you a shout out. Um, but no, um, you, he's probably used to it, as, as I am as well. I mean, people tell me all the time, oh, you're so cute. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, you're so cute. And, you know, that's fine. But as I, I'm like, as long as there's, like, a balance of, like, oh, you're, you're pretty or you're attractive or, you know, as long as I get, Keep I respect. hear a little bit of everything. Still like a grown woman. 
Yeah. Right. 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 Well, speaking of pick me up, I know that you started your career um, early on, and your biggest, uh, well, not I won't say your biggest, but one of your uh, main roles that you got in your first ones is with Will Smith in the movie, which I love. That's huge. I am Legend. You are a stand-in for his daughter Willow Smith. Um, how was that, and how did that come about? And how was it to have Will Smith pick you up and your cheek to cheek with them? Mm, the embrace. <laughs> You know, it was such a, and that's what we were. We were cheek to cheek. Um, that was such a great experience. Um, so how that came about, I I was in Indiana at the time. I hadn't even moved out to LA. And I was just one night, you know, I was like, there's got to be more. There's something out there for me. I don't know mm-hmm. what it is, but I'm going to get on the internet and whatever, right. like figure out. So I ended up on a message board. It was for, it was a Yahoo message board. It was for people with dwarfism for acting. And there was a post on there that basically said, um, we're looking for an African-American little person, preferably female, that can be a body double to a child in a, um, in a major motion picture. And so it did not say, like, the names or title or anything. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I'm sorry. It did say the title. It said, I am legend. But it, I didn't – it was not – it was, like, in pre-production. Gotcha. So I, I didn't know, like, what that was. So I ended up going on IMDb which is a movie database to find out what's coming out, Mm -hmm. what's, you know, whatever. And so I typed in I Am Legend, and then sure enough, the the top person on the bill was Will Smith. And I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty big, you know. Yeah, and then I think I saw, like, other other castmates, uh, Sally Richardson, and then I I saw Willow Smith. And um, she was six years old at the time. Mm. So they needed someone to be a child because – Children in motion uh, pictures can only, there's labor laws, child labor laws. And so kids can only be on set for a certain amount of time and you got to like change them out, whatever. Right. So they just needed someone to be her body double and her stand in. Um, but that kind of, you know, look, look like a child. Uh, obviously, they weren't going to show my face. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, from behind, if they if I had the same outfit she had on which was the purple pajamas and the red coat, if you've all seen the movie. Um, so I, I lived in that outfit for days. But um, so, yeah. So anyway, long story short, um, long story short, they, you know, I submitted some pictures. We went back and forth. Finally, I got the word that I was selected out of everyone that had applied. So I went to New York and lived there for like six or six weeks. Wow. And yeah, and I filmed her parts and yeah and it was great will smith the first day day one on set he called me miss every day he called me miss Allie. that was my nickname from him Aww. yeah and so like there's that one scene the the uh, helicopter scene where we're filming we were literally filming in five degree weather it was mm. freezing outside it was january 2007 i'll never forget and so there were you know he they would take his daughter out put me in so he's holding me as they're going to that helicopter and everything's frantic and people are running everywhere. And yeah, I'm he's picking me up and we're in the freezing cold, but I wasn't cold because I was in his arms. I know that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But we were very up close and personal. Mm-hmm. I love that. Right. But we also know that you don't like to be called to play elves or leprechauns. Can we talk about that? Right. Yeah. um, You know, listen, we're in Hollywood. We all sometimes have to do what we have to do to pay the bills. So I, I, you know, I've had my fair share of uh, roles, whether it's like in commercials or TV, whatever, movies, where I've had to be, you know, an elf, a leprechaun. I've been a bear before in a bear costume. I played a, a cub. Oh. <laughs> and so I'm in a full, like, you know, cub outfit, like sweating my butt off. And um, so I, I've done things that I'm like, you know what? I am destined to do. I want to be me. I want to, you know, be in front of the camera. I want to speak and and do these lines and and Real be in role. these roles. Yeah. Yeah, that I'm I'm myself that I'm able to shine, but you know, uh and, and I I did get to do that, but you know, early on when I first got here, like I said, I had to uh-huh. Yeah, I had to do what I had to do. Right. What's your dream role? My dream my dream role is to um you know, have a series uh like a TV series mm-hmm. where it's about me. Um it's about a little person, you know, African-American woman 
that is, you know, trying to make it in Hollywood, um, trying to break barriers, trying to change Hollywood's perspective on, like, getting cast in major, um, you know, roles as far as TVs and movies, and also just um, sharing my personal life. My personal life is a movie and it's a TV series in itself. There it is. Yeah, so I, I'm ready to, because here's the thing. I have gone out, you know, I, I have a, an agent and, and I get auditions once in a blue moon. My agency usually sends me out on things that are for little people. Mm. They don't they don't really think outside of the box and think, okay, this role is calling for an African-American woman between the ages of, you know, 30 and 50. Let's just send everyone that we have on our roster out, including me, you know, or someone uh, like me. Or they try to single you out. Mm. Yeah, they only send me out for the most part on things that are for me. And then how often on a daily basis uh, is there roles for a little person there's not right. so we've come to the the time where you know and this goes for everyone like if if you're not getting that job you're not getting this this opportunity it's time now to create your own opportunity mm. make your own role you know and so that's where I'm at and that's what I am you know determined to do I love that you better go ahead <laughs> yeah. Miss Allie uh-huh, for sure thank you oh so how is your dating life um, and, you know, I want to know your types. I want to know about your dating past, your dating history. Um, because somebody did comment on a TikTok a long time ago and I saw, did you have a husband? Were you married before? I, uh, do we have to talk about now? I'm just kidding. No, I did have a husband. <laughs> I, I was married for a little bit. Um, What's a little bit? <laughs> I was, I was married for like I don't know, four or five years. Okay, uh, a nice yeah. Lengthy. I mean, yeah, it was lengthy. Um, Okay, so if you're watching, don't you know? Don't hate. I'm. I love you as a friend, but um, you know, he, yeah, I did marry someone. Um, okay, so funny thing, because you said what is my type? So I, I usually always date average size men. I always date average size men, but but dating average size men, you know, here's the thing. I'm a little person, and so when I date average size men, I want them to be, you know, accepting and open minded to you know, being with someone like me, Mm because I know that that's different for most people. So I'm always, I've always been the person like date average size men, but I'm like, wait, I'm I'm kind of a hypocrite because, you know, I want them to accept me, but I don't really, I I, I just always say no to little, little men, you know, Mm -hmm. like I always say no to that. And I'm like, that's kind of hypocritical. So I, you know, I came here and I finally gave, I met someone that was, that happened to be a little person. Okay. And and I gave it a try because again I didn't want to be a hypocrite and so um, it, it didn't work out and it, it he's a great person but it just you know just like with any relationship we were just literally two different types of people so um, I tried it I did, I've been there done that I tried okay. it and um, I you know I dated a little person but um, you know we all have our preferences so right. I'm kind of back on the um, average size guys. Um, you know, that's kind of where I'm at now, but <laughs> I got a question whatever, about you know. that. So with you, mm-hmm. you know, being a little person mm-hmm. and the average size man, what if he has that, you know, that mandingo? Yeah. How does that work? Like, does it hurt? Are you, does, you know, I'm just a little curious. I mean, you know, I, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I, um, you know, I've never encountered any, any issues? So <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I've dated. I've so dated. I can climb, honey. Okay, I can take it. Give me. <laughs> I, I am dying. <laughs> yeah, that you guys are funny. Um, I knew. I knew this was going to be a question. Of course. I was like, okay, be prepared because that's going to be a question. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to adjust us podcast, babes? Yeah. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, I, I mean, here's okay. Listen, here's the thing. I'm not going to date someone that's like a linebacker just because, right. and and that has actually nothing to do with you know, size mm. below, but I'm just saying I, I have a like a height limit. Like okay. you can't be too tall okay. either because I'm I'm three feet eight, I'm sixty pounds. I just don't want it's gotta make some pounds? sense. 
I'm like four, probably like four or five oh of you. Oh, my God, Fred. Damn, that is ridiculous. <laughs> I got to slow down. That's crazy. Oh, my God. You are fine, girl. Knowing that you could be like that many people in one person? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> I'm about three. So. Right? Oh, wow. Okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, you know, I, it has to make sense. I, and, and, and the crazy thing is, is really, extremely, really tall guys. Mm-hmm. Um, hit on me. I, the tallest guy I ever dated was six four, and that's real tall. That is tall for anyone. Max, but yeah, that's tall for me. That's high. I know, and and I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's like one of those things like opposites attract, or mm-hmm. but I'm like, listen, I, I, and I won't date that tall now. I mean, now I have my my cutoff is nobody taller than six feet. Okay, but and even that is tall. But it's why like is that. Why is that? Because you know, I mean. Because I felt like when I dated those extremely mm-hmm. tall, I've dated, you know, someone was six two, six. like I said, 6'4 was the tallest. And I just felt like, I guess it shouldn't matter because love is love, but I just mm-hmm. felt like it was too extreme. Mm-hmm. I, I felt like, you know, we just, would, I know I'm going to get looks anyway, right. whoever I'm with, but I felt like it was just too much of a and difference. you can have a prayer for shoot. I'm big and I do not like big men. So, yeah, yeah you know. We mm-hmm. just, yeah, we right. just, yeah, yeah, I just... Yeah, like, yeah, I just, too tall is, I I just feel like it just might be a bit much, you know? Mind you, I love a teddy bear. (laughs) (laughs) You get a lot of men that have, like, fetishes. Okay, yeah, that's that's a thing. I mean, we've probably, all of us in this room have been fetishized, you know? Mm, Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, definitely uh, being with it's it's not everyone's thing, mm-hmm. but it is definitely a thing. Being uh, with a little woman, yeah, or or whatever, a little person, whatever. It is definitely a thing. Um, I have had all kinds of, you know, DM crazy DMs and just things said to me in person. And mm. uh, the main thing is, oh, I've never, you know. Been with a little, you know. I hear I if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, like you know, and it's I'm like, like, they think you're an experience. You're not experienced though. You feel yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm not. Maybe you know, you're experience. You're not experiment. Right. You're not. Yeah. Experiment. You're not experiment. Yes. Yeah. yeah I'm not an experiment, and I'm not. Yeah. I'm not here to help you complete a bucket list. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I I'm just, not gonna right? hold you, friend. I'm. I was always. My friends know this. You don't know this, but I was. I'm always willing and able. You know to. You know. Interact with anyone, <laughs> short, mm-hmm. tall. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been very open about that, yeah. and it's not just sexual. I mean, I wouldn't mind giving a go. Yeah, like you said, love is love. Yeah, <laughs> I love, love it. Is love. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I want to know. Okay. So, do you you drive? Yes. Okay, so how does this work? Okay, um, because a lot of people don't think that little people drive. Yes. But honey, you drive. You park right up front. I, I yes. I, well, I have to get around. I. You know what? I I was determined a long time ago when I found out that I, little people can drive. You know, I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, because I'm not waiting. You know, right. I'm not waiting on anybody. I got I got to go. Like I need to go mm-hmm. where I need to go. So, uh, yeah. So little people usually there's two ways that most little people learn to drive or that they do drive. So one is uh, like me and hand this hand controls, okay. and that would also apply for people that are like quadriplegic that can't use like their, their legs. legs. Mm-hmm. So it's like a it's like a thing. I mean it's under it's attached to your pedals and it's like a little hand thing. To, oh yeah. No. Okay. Oh. Yeah. It's yeah. like, you know, this way to go and whatever. Mm-hmm. Um so that's how I learned. Um but also a lot of little people and I think this is more common, a lot of little people have pedal extensions. Like so they had the Pedals where they they come up. Y'all can get it. Oh, okay. yeah. So they're shorter. The only thing with pedal extensions that I don't like is what what am I gonna do if I pull up to like a restaurant or an event and it, it's a valet? So then the the guy the, the guy that takes oh, my car, yeah. you know, they can't. Mm-hmm. If I get pedal extensions, how are they gonna use the pedals? They have to scrunch their legs up right, or whatever. Right. So I I have it in my car where it's um you know hand controls, mm-hmm. but I I actually know how to drive both ways. And so, um, yeah, it, Ain't it, it's stopping great. you, right? Yeah, right. you. I never driven, so I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I love it, and I have to, you know, I have to sit on pillows, um, you know, because, uh, you know, or else I'd be underneath the the steering wheel. But yeah, <laughs> <Not that. laughs> so I'm, I'm like kind of. It's like a I'm a little makeshift booster seat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And so it's so many, it's so many things out here now that can help you do everything damn near. But what is one thing that you kind of struggle with on a daily? That's just like, God damn it. On a daily? Yeah, like something that's just like, oh. Um, not being able to reach things. Okay. Um mm-hmm. because especially in public, okay, you know, like I go At to the like door and stuff. Yeah, okay. doors, elevator buttons. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. you know, you when you go to the um the post office, mm-hmm. why do they make the counter high as hell? That's like, true, yeah. I'm like and those slots too that you have to drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah, I'm like down here, I'm mm-hmm. like you know, I'll I'll get in line and it's always like the person that's, you know, the customer service person is always like next. And they're looking at the person behind me. And then I have to sit there and wave like, hello, no, I'm next. You know? Right, yeah. Yeah, so mm-hmm. not being seen, not being heard, mm-hmm. not being able to reach things. I'm public bathrooms. Um, mm-hmm. Not all of the sinks. I mean, we are living in crazy yeah. times. I got to keep my hands clean, you know. And yeah, I'm right. I, sometimes I can't reach the sink, you know, especially at the airport and stuff. And I'm like, I... You know, like there should be a stool in every public bathroom. Absolutely. You know, for for I mean, I know I get it. We're not we're not running around every day. You don't see us every day, but we do exist. Mm-hmm. You right, know? you're human. What the hell? Yeah. yeah, they need to make that accessible for everybody. Exactly. I mean, they, which is great. They have you know accessibility for people in wheelchairs mm-hmm. for the most part. And so I'm like, but yeah, there we, we're there's little people too. Like, right. you know. And I live in Carson. I heard. Have you heard about a little community in Carson that's full of little people? I Is that true? Okay, you know what? I keep hearing about this. Yeah, and I heard about it too. I'm like, I've never seen it. And they, and they said they hate like average people. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, it says a whole community of cars are full of little people and they hate average people. Wow. Yes, I, I couldn't wait to ask you. Yeah, well, okay, I've heard about it. I even heard about it. Well, when I lived in Indiana, mm-hmm. I always heard about there was a bar in Chicago. Okay. And I heard about this bar in Chicago that was... I mean, average size people could go in. Like they didn't hate you, mm-hmm. but the whole staff from the from the security. Oh to the, wow! To the bartenders, everyone. Like okay. everyone was little little people, and I heard about that. And I always wanted to go. I I don't think it's still a thing anymore. And I never like went up there to to check that out. Mm-hmm. But um, so then I I come out here, and yes, I've heard about this community yeah. supposedly that is like. You know, all little, I didn't know that they did not like average size people. That's what I, I heard, see, so I don't know. You know, that's what I heard. <laughs> right. Mm. I, I I keep hearing things, but I just like, I'm like, well, where, I mean, like, okay, I want, maybe I want to check it out. Exactly, yeah. Right. Like, is it a secret society there? <laughs> right, exactly. Mm. Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of secret societies, I know you've done a lot of gigs and things like that, and you like to party just as much as I do, honey. Yes. But have you ever been into any weird parties, like in Hollywood, that were, like, abnormal? Abnormal? Abnormal parties. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I've been to some, I have been to a lot of parties. Mm. Um. In my 13 years of being here. Um, yeah, I mean, I've gone into some party. I went into a party once and I was like, I think this is like a sex party and I'm going to, you know, tur- mm-hmm. turn around. And I, I was just <laughs> like, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not into that. Um, so, yeah, I've gone into like weird parties like that, you know. Um, yeah. And I'm just like, how who, who inv- how did I get here? Right, yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, that happened, like, maybe once. But, I mean, I mean, most of the parties, you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm like, I use my head a little bit. So, I'm like, if it don't sound right, or and now you can look up address. Like, mm-hmm. now on our phones. You can check around. Right. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. Let me see what's around. <laughs> and so, you know, if it, lo- if it doesn't look right, you know, I, I'm not going. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I used to do a lot of, like, you know, Hollywood Hills parties back in the day. I don't really do, I don't do after parties now anymore. Um, I, I don't do nightclubs anymore and I don't do oh, wow. after parties. I do love parties, though. I love parties. I love events. I especially love events. I love where I can network. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, but I would still do like to go out and dance. So every now and then, like if the DJ's good or whatever, I will hit a nightclub up. But for the most part, you know, I'm like, I gotta be. I gotta go to bed. It's, it's two. Like I, I gotta be asleep. <laughs> she said, "Mama has to go to bed." Mm. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want kids? And would you be able to, you know, carry a child? Yeah. So, um, well, I think now it's too late in the game for me to have children. Um, Cause I, I'm, 
older than what I probably look. Right, because you're giving young for sure. You yeah, look good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Like yeah. Thank you. I'm I mean, you know, I'll never tell my age. You don't but have to. I <laughs> <laughs> I I'm a little on the older side. So I think that, you know, that time has come and gone. Okay. Um, but did I ever I don't know. I went back and forth. Like sometimes I was like, "Yeah, I do want children," um, and but then other times I think I was like, if I had like the right person in my life, I would have wanted to. But you know, that's always been like whatever. Um, and I don't know. And then like medically, I always was kind of concerned too because right. I was told that I could have children. But I was told that I would be on, it's very risky High just risk. because of how small mm. I am. And so I was told that, like, if I, you know, if I did get pregnant or whatever, I would be um, on bed rest, like, a majority, like, pretty much oh. the whole time. Oh. And, yeah. And I'm like, who wants to lay in bed for, you know, nine, nine, nine months? months. <laughs> no. I was like, I have stuff to do. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I don't think, yeah. I. I make a better aunt. Uh, I make a better auntie, rather. And I make, um, (coughs) you know, maybe, I don't know. I would not be opposed to, like, adopting if I get, you know, if I'm financially together, all the way Uh together. Absolutely. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I'm good. It's hard enough to take care of yourself. (laughs) Who you Hello. (laughs) Every day is a struggle. (laughs) It's Mm. it's pricey. I'll take it there. (laughs) Right. (laughs) (laughs) what's going on okay it's time for that segment where we take a story from you all discuss it and give our input what we got today well we have a story somebody said um recently i have experienced a breakup before we got serious everything was perfect until we got serious Mm. he cheated had a kid, and now has been unemployed for almost a year. Jesus. I work as a nurse full-time and pay all of the bills. He recently moved out because I caught him cheating. And I'm just a, at a point where I feel like I don't want this, and he abused me physically and then apologized and left. I did not cry, nor did I fight back, sadly. I took it and accepted it. And now that he is gone, I feel better, empowered, um, and because I needed to feel safe. Love is blind, and the last time made me see. So my question is, why do people, men and women, feel entitled to doing people wrong Mm. and not be accountable, but choose to abuse you instead of leaving? Why, when you choose to leave after trying, sacrificing and being blindly accepting, accepting of a person's bullshit, you're wrong because it's now draining? Manipulation slash gaslighting, maybe? Definitely giving uh, manipulation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gaslighting as well. Uh huh. You showed your hand and then hit it. Not like, don't do that. Uh huh. You threw that rock and you try to turn around like mm, that wasn't me. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. And now you're out the door. Right. Yeah, but um, him being unemployed and all that. That's yeah. Then the abuse. We're not doing that. How you the br- uh-huh. how you paying his bills and he beating your ass? Right. That's what I'm saying. Uh, sorry to say it like that, sis. You don't but... have no job. Are you trying to get active and beat me down? Right. You go beat down them applications. Beat oh. down them doors. <laughs> they let me in. Hire me. Uh, come on. <laughs> What's going on? Right, what's going on for real? <laughs> yeah, his mind is all tore up. Yes. Mm, what you think about that? Oh, red, it's that's got red flags mm-hmm. all up and down. Mm-hmm. Um, from the the paint you're paying a, a grown man's bills to he's he's you know putting his hands on you right. and um you know tearing down your self esteem and all of that. No, like you did the right thing. Right thing. Leave. Don't don't even ever look back. Please don't. keep going. Get or not, you know what I'm saying. You can handle it. The right people will come your way. You're good. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So you want to do off the dribble. Um, these are just random questions that I come up at the top of my head. Okay. Um, so if you, your first, okay, say if somebody asked you on a date, what would be your ideal first date? Ooh, okay. Um, my ideal first date is, it usually involves food because I love to eat. That's right. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I always say, like, Getting to know each other over a meal is always like key. Um, but if we're not gonna if we're not gonna do the food thing, then it, it needs to be some type of an adventure. You know, like maybe right. go out on like uh what's it, a cute little what are they called? Like little boat or whatever. Okay. You know, or like go to like a theme park or you know, you something. Like rides? Yeah. Oh, like that's lit. we're doing something cute. And you could swim? 
What's that? You can swim? Well, no, I can't swim. Okay, because you said a boat. Don't get yeah, too well, much yeah. water in there. A so. boat, but I have my life jacket on. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know. Look, baby, he, look, if he can swim, he'll save you. Yeah, okay. right. That's I think so I'm so in distress. No. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. So, you know, just doing something cute. An activity or, like I say, lunch or dinner. Um, don't ask me to go on a hike Mm-mm-mm. or to go sit in a park or go for coffee. Like, those are my, like. I was just about to ask you your turn offs. There we go. Uh, those are my turn offs. Like, no, like, cause I'm like, co- go for a coffee. Like, now I just feel like you're you're being cheap. Is this yeah, a, right? Absolutely. Or is this a business meeting? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Where do you see yourself in five years, and what's one major thing you want to accomplish? Well, I would say the major thing I want to accomplish is just to get more. Um, you know, um, I want to do more in in film and TV. That's okay. like. Goal number one, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I'm putting my all into it as Absolutely. far as, you know, aligning myself with the right people, the right opportunities. Network. And yeah, and, and we're, I'm working with someone right now and we're creating um, something for me. So, you know, that I think that's the major thing because I think with that, not only is it going to be like I'm doing something that I love, but it's, it's also uh, there's going to be a message behind it that I think – Every it would resonate with anyone that's mm-hmm. just just human. You don't have to be a little person or whatever. Just anyone that's human that just wants to do better. And that's right. um, I I think it'll just you know um, there there's many reasons why it's it would just um, you know meeting different types of people just leveling up basically. Here so um, that's where I see myself in five years, and then also along with it, you know just. You know, maybe um, meeting that special someone, but that's that's like that's not first. The getting me together is exactly. first, and then everything yep. else can It'll fall follow. into place. It'll that's fall right. into yeah. place. Yeah. yeah, I hope you being on here might open some doors and somebody reaches out because you just move with style and grace, and you just seem so cool. And I just want the best for you for Aww. real. Yeah, you got an awesome spirit. I can feel it. Thank you. That's yeah. a, and you guys too. I'm so. I'm so proud of like, I watch and I've known Jacob forever and oh, so I love that. we we went from you know sitting at, at Craig's okay. and talking about you know our hopes and you dreams. was at the bar and now he is y- y- doing yeah, be at the bar, made, he made his hopes and dreams happen alongside with you and you guys she are has. killing it and I love this for you thank you thank you I just yeah. love my friend. <laughs> guys, this is a great episode come on now but oh before we gosh. end it we you know we got to do a little catch up. Oh yes. yes. So what's oh. going on, my friend? Okay, let me share with you and okay. you all. What you look happened like you to need me. to release something. I do because it's been. I've been thinking about it all week. Okay, so last week I broke my celibacy. I was celibate for six months. Okay. I broke my celibacy. We had in a course in the car. I have a challenger. We was in a passenger seat. Mm-hmm. I had one leg out the window and it was drizzling. And I had one leg on the ceiling. Yes, I did. Nice. I still got it and it was really good. <laughs> so I am not. Mad that I lost my celibacy. Okay, so the next day we were talking about it and everything. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he said, yeah, we're going to run it back. And Jacob was in my ear like, yeah, friend, you're going to hit him up. You're going to do it again. I'm like, you know what? I am. I ended up getting a little too drunk. And I ended up calling that boy like eight times. <laughs> like a maniac. Eight times. Eight times. Eight times. <laughs> First, it was like four times. Okay. Then he called back, but I missed it. And so then I called some more times. Mm-hmm. What's that? Five more times? Six, seven, eight. Whatever. Anyways, yes, I blew his phone up, and now I have not heard from him. Like, the next day, he didn't hit me up. He, it's been a week now. Shut up. And I have not heard from him this all this week. Have you been reaching out like... No, I haven't. No, oh, I haven't okay, texted okay, or said okay. anything. Because when I woke up the next morning and saw how many times I called mm-hmm. and that he didn't answer and he didn't tell me good morning, I'm like, oh, Oh, my did I chase God. him away? Or exactly. He thinks I'm thirsty, whoremonger, big, no, don't never get no dick type of girl. Well, you should have just sent a follow-up text the next day like, oh, my goodness, I apologize. And I was going drink. to, like, you know what, my bad, I was drunk. But you know what? Sometimes when you embarrass, you like to hide. Yeah. yeah. So I felt like a turtle with my head tucked in. I'm oh, like, let me not say nothing because I'm scared because I'm embarrassed but now the connection is just gone but you know what it's not gone because once you fall back I notice once you fall back or just you know like uh oh take a little breather you'll hear from him 
And that's what he I was will. thinking. Like, maybe in the weeks to go, like, yeah. what am I rushing for, you know? Yes. Come on, he Allie. Mm, you you know he had a good time, too. Stuff. I like that. So, you'll hear from him. He'll be back. He's going he to be yeah. back. And then you can let him know that I was drunk, babe. I'm sorry about last time. Exactly. Or I just probably just don't even, won't even bring it up. But right. I know how to move forward. Like, you know what? When I get a little drunk, put the phone down. Right. For real. Cut it off. But we can all get a little bit out of hand when we drink it. Yes. But it made it seem, I feel like to me, because I was celebrating for so long and I finally got some, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I'm on a roll. I want more. <laughs> hey, it happens to the best of us. Don't, right, don't sweat right. It. Okay. Right. Yeah, so that was um, pretty eventful for me. Yes. Mm, well, Mr. Hong Kong came on back, honey. I really didn't get to see him, though. Well, it was very brief, but he got us a hotel room. Um, and But my homegirl, you know, we weren't talking for a couple of days. I needed, mm. you know, when you're around somebody all the time, you just need some space. Ooh, it's yes. like, oh, girl, please. Mm-hmm. Um, but the last day I went, you know, Dinners and all of the drinks, cocktails. Everything. I didn't see any stories, so maybe he didn't. I have didn't post to buy the bottles this time. Oh, babe, we stayed it at the well, Mayborn for five days. Uh, well, nobody knew. So over a thousand dollars a night, darling. Actually, nobody, I just posted it. Nobody it's knew. on my Instagram. Did you nobody go like knew. my post? Um, did you see it? I, I I saw you were doing dinner with somebody. Thank you. Go ahead on my I Instagram. I'm going to see that. right now. Uh-huh. And go ahead and filming. swipe over. And yeah, I'm going to insert the picture down below, I just want to make sure that we're giving the viewers and our friends here. Oh, I, the viewers can Facts. see it. I inserted the Facts. pictures right below. Facts. Let's see. Oh, the shrimp is not looking good. A swipe. <laughs> Oh, it's two drinks, no bottles. Okay, some more shots. Okay. What kind of shots were those? Um. Okay, Casa Azul. Uh-huh. Ooh. And those drinks look amazing. Thank you, okay. babe. I was like... A free cake. Cake's always free. Okay. <laughs> You're talking about none of the other food. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a hater. <laughs> okay, you might have did your thing. Come on, Amber. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what's up, though. I like that. Yes, thing. but Amber, I'm so proud of you. You've been in your bag. You've been moving in silence. I love this for you. Thank you, thank you. Just trying to make some moves here and there, bigger and better, and... um. Keep the faith. I've really been you know, faith in it, you know, um, not doubting anymore. I'm asking the Lord for what I want, and I'm not turning back like, oh, it won't happen. No, it's going to happen. No, it's done. Exactly. And on oh, it. Yeah. 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 Once you know that he has your path for you, it kind of makes you relax a little bit, and that's where I've been at. Right. Mm-hmm. Happy birthday to our girl, Nisi Nash. Yes. Uh, can't wait to celebrate you later on. Mm-hmm. Very excited. And Ali. Oh my goodness! I love you so much. I really do appreciate you coming on the pod. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. I, listen, I had so much fun with both of you guys. I love the questions, and you know, I just want to inform and enlighten everyone. And mm-hmm. I had a blast doing it. Thank you so much for both of you for having You're welcome. me. Welcome. What is next Thank for you? <laughs> Thank you. I, it's you know, it's the sky's the limit. Like there we go. Mm-hmm. What's next? <laughs> Oh, what's now? Oh, no, my God, I'm like, oh, that's anything. I thought you said that's next for you. And I'm like, yes, guys. Well, that too. (laughs) What's next? Oh, oh, what's next for me? Okay. (laughs) What's next for me? Yes, I'm going to be filming um, July the 4th weekend. I'm filming. I'm starting that project that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. I teamed up with a great director, um, producer director, and he wrote a 92-page script for me. It's all about me. And, um... We uh we start shooting Fourth of July weekend, and uh, yeah, congratulations! And once, yeah, yeah, thank you. And yeah. once we uh get this, um, you know, once it's done filming, um, we're gonna start with the film festivals, from the big ones to the smaller ones. We're putting it everywhere. We're gonna, you know, try to get all the exposure we can, and then uh, we'll start looking at some of the streaming services. Okay, and try to get that sold. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. We would love to be invited to one of the screenings. Yeah. Right? Oh, oh, you will. Mm-hmm. No, you uh, I you'll have a premiere. I always whatever I do, I always have a premiere for it. That's right. Um I did I did a music video with I played I was in a video with Drake's dad. Oh, I forgot to um mention that. Yeah, Dennis. Yeah, Den- I love Dennis, Dennis Dennis Graham, Drake's yeah. dad. I played his stalker in a vi- a music video. Bobby, going through my phone, reading my text. Got me thinking what she gonna do next. I can't sleep at night without one eye open. When I'm in the other room, I can hear a song. Tip-toe. You be getting rolls. That's what I'm talking about. Right. Yeah. That and video so we was had hilarious. A big, premiere, a big premiere party for it. So, like, anything I do, I always do a premiere party. So, you, yeah. When this, this comes out, you guys will definitely be there. Like, 100%. Like, awesome. you're, there, you're in there. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> Once again, this is the Just Us Podcast. If you're enjoying the content, please go and like our um, videos, comment, subscribe. You can listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, everywhere, honey. We're everywhere. I'm one of your hosts, Jacob Willis. It's your girl, Just Living Baby. And we'll see you in episode 43. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>